This video is sponsored by Established Titles. Remember high school biology class when they taught you about animal classification? Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, invertebrates. In practice, this is a woefully inadequate system. Birds are technically reptiles, so should really be included within them. There are fish that are more closely related to mammals than to other fish, and don't even get me started on invertebrates. These classes, with their strict criteria, at least the way they're taught in schools, create a limited scope of the diversity of life on Earth, particularly in its ancient history where you'll find loads of animals that don't conform to any of these groups. It's in this taxonomic negative space that we find the Permian synapsids, or stem mammals, and it's really tricky to explain what these things are, which is kind of why I love them so much. They were part of a truly ancient lost world, a vast landscape of unbroken wilderness, something which is increasingly hard to come by these days, what with urban development and climate change. Which is why I'm happy to say this video is sponsored by Established Titles. Scotland's highlands and forests are among the most spectacular landscapes in the British Isles, to which I can personally attest. And established titles are working to keep it that way by letting you guys own a plot of land on an estate in Aberdeenshire. For each plot of land bought, as little as one square foot, a new tree will be planted to help global reforestation efforts with charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, for the benefit of nature and the enjoyment of future generations. But what's in it for me, I hear you ask? Well, by rights of ancient tradition, owning land in Scotland entitles you to become a laird. You can choose what title you want to go by, you can buy it for yourself or as a gift, you get a fancy certificate that you can show off to your peasantly acquaintances and has a unique plot number so you can find its exact location. This isn't even like those shady online degrees or buy a star websites you hear about, this is a legit title. You can put it on credit cards, dating profiles, plane tickets, and no one can argue with you. So if you're like me and you want to do your part for the environment, follow the link in the description to establish titles and use the discount code FOSSILFIX to get 10% off on your way to becoming a ruler of the land. Much like the synapsids were. You may have heard these evolutionary delinquents by the name mammal-like reptiles, with the implication they're a sort of evolutionary link between the two, but that doesn't really work. The last common ancestors of true reptiles and mammals split from one another long before either group appeared, so the term stem mammal has come into fashion as it's more accurate to think of these guys as being mammal adjacent. So that interview clipping where the effects guy from Jurassic World said Dimetrodon was his favourite dinosaur? That's wrong. It's just wrong. It's not a dinosaur. It's not even a reptile. What are these people doing making dinosaur movies when they don't even know what a dinosaur is? Does nobody think to fact check these things before they go spreading misinformation, undermining years of work by researchers and science communicators? Not to mention spreading the rhetoric that it's totally okay to ignore science if you find the facts just a little bit challenging. Oh dear god, I've had an aneurysm. The first synapses predate the dinosaurs by over 80 million years, and thanks to the unity of the supercontinent Pangaea, they never needed passports. In fact, the widespread fossils of the Dicynodont Lystrosaurus, among other plants and animals, helped German geologist Alfred Wegener develop the theory of continental drift. Their massive range allowed the stem mammals to fill a huge variety of ecological niches, from tiny burrowing foragers to gigantic saber-toothed predators. But as is often the case, their success was no match for some deeply inconsiderate forces of nature. The Permian era ended around 250 million years ago with the worst mass extinction event of all time, killing over 80 percent of all life on Earth. The prevailing theory is the centuries-long eruption of a supervolcano in Russia. The eruption pumped lethal volumes of carbon and methane into the atmosphere, creating rapid climate change and destabilizing the world's ecosystems. Oh, how fun! It is somewhat tragic that an entire order of life outside of conventional classification no longer exists, but it speaks to the immeasurable diversity of nature that can't be defined by our very human need for neat categories and easily definable criteria. It's estimated that 99.9% .9 of all life that has ever existed on Earth is extinct, and that 99.9% .9 of them aren't lucky enough to be preserved in the fossil record. It's almost beyond the capacity of the human mind to imagine such numbers. Maybe life on Earth isn't best represented by a tree diagram with straight lines and tidy boxes, but a fractal endlessly dividing and radiating in all directions at once with no clear-cut end or rigid organisation. Such a shame then that our meagre mortal eyes only let us see a tiny fraction of a percentage of what there is to be found. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to help me make more like it, please consider pledging to the channel's Patreon page where you can get early access, behind the scenes material, and maybe even a personal shout out, just like Carl Zori Leo. Big thank you as well to Established Titles for sponsoring this video. Go check them out and maybe get yourself a slice of Scottish wilderness with the discount code FOSSILFIX. Catch you later!